when they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus, and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Hosanna in the highest! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the good news for the people of God, and we say, thanks be to God. This past week, the Council of Bishops decided once again to postpone the General Conference of the United Methodist Church. In case you don't know, our denomination has been fighting for quite some time about the full inclusion of LGBTQAI plus persons in the life of the church. I confess, I'm a little burned out on this matter, in large part because throughout this denominational fight, uh, queer people have been encouraged to build relationships with those who have what we call the a different theological point of view. Ostensibly, that might seem like a good idea, but I can't overstate the emotional and spiritual toll it has taken on, on queer people. I know queer people who are so bitter that they have, they have left their local congregation feeling that the United Methodist Church has betrayed them. Now, however, I wonder if in our willingness to accept homophobia as, as a, a different theological opinion, we didn't participate in the very betrayal of ourselves. Holy Week is a story of betrayal. It's in plain sight. Jesus knows that his friends will betray him and he goes to Jerusalem anyway. So great is his love for his people. This is maybe different than the betrayals that we typically face. I don't know about you, but most of the time in my life when I am betrayed, I, I don't see it coming because I, I try to assume the best about people. Perhaps this is faithfulness. Honestly, most of the time, it's probably something else. When I go all in on a collaboration or a relationship with another human being, I go in with the expectation of forthrightness and honesty from the other party. So privileged am I that I expect to be treated well and for everything to just work out okay in the end. And so when when these betrayals come, I am furious, furious, not just at the injustice, but because of the wounding of my sometimes very fragile ego. Even with the full knowledge of what is to come, Jesus is furious too. After riding into Jerusalem, he, he flips some tables, he, he smites an unsuspecting fig tree, he tells a not-so-veiled parable about evil people who who murder the son of a vineyard owner, and, and he predicts the destruction of the temple. Jesus is so angry at hypocrisy and the fair-weathered nature of the people around him who claim to be his friends. Eight years before her death in 2014, poet Maya Angelou spoke with comedian Dave Chappelle on a television show called Iconoclast. During the program, Chappelle sees these old photos of Angelou with the likes of, of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. And when he sees these 
photos, he asks her, how are you not angry? Meaning, how are you not angry about all that has been done to black people in the United States of America? It's an honest question from the comedian. If you've ever heard Chappelle's work, you know that he is a person with a lot of anger. It's anger that I don't fully understand, much like the anger of my Asian American and Pacific Islander friends with the recent revelation of the surge of hate crimes against their communities. I, I tried to listen to their anger in these past days, knowing that I can only ever fully know my own anger. I don't presume to tell them what to do with their anger, but I know all too well what I do with mine. Too often, I allow my anger to morph into something else. Rather than, than walking in righteousness, I wander into the shadows of self-righteous indignation. I, I tamp down my anger in such a way that it festers into bitterness. In the course of the conversation, between the comedian and the poet, it is the poet Maya Angelou who has the last word. In response to Chappelle's question, she says that, of course, she is angry. She says, if you're not angry, you're either a stone or you're too sick to be angry. You should be angry, but you must not be bitter because bitterness is like cancer. It eats upon the host. It doesn't do anything to the object of its displeasure. Again and again, we need to be freed from our bitterness. And this freedom is only found in, in the ways that we can use our anger for the glory of God and the transformation of the world. It is in the turning of the tables, in the breaking of the bread, in the garden of Gethsemane and at the foot of the cross that Jesus shows us how to use our anger to speak truth and work for justice. We follow him along the path of Holy Week every time we use our anger to write, to, to march, to vote, to speak, to dance, to be a force of good in this world. We follow Jesus on the path of Holy Week every time we trust that God can work through our anger to do something new. As Quaker and Pennsylvanian, William Penn writes, for though our Savior's passion is over, his compassion is not. In him we find more than all we stand to lose in the world. In the way of Jesus, we find the way, the truth and life itself. And so in this Holy Week and in every week to come, let us walk in the way of Christ, trusting that again and again, God can work through our failings, our hurt, and even our betrayal to bring about the most unexpected new life. Thanks be to God.